Hello, I'm Mr. Mm -hmm. Steve Rhodes, as we do each and every Monday at 20 past the hour. And don't forget, folks, Steve has an outstanding show here every trading day, 1 to 2 Eastern Standard Time. Also, a great newsletter, Mastering Probability. Now, it's very easy to get Steve's newsletter, folks, and a great time to get it because we have a trader's market. There's no doubt about that, man. Come over to our website at TFNN. You go right into the newsletters. You're going to see Mastering Probability on the right-hand side. You just hit subscribe. You can get Mastering Probability for one month for $149. You get it for six months for $6.95, which is a savings of $199. And you get it for a year, folks, for $11.95, which is a savings of $593 or 33%. Steve Rhodes, what's going on? Well, just shifting uh, my sports gears from uh, football, though we've got a good game coming up next weekend, let's hope, to, yes. uh, to things like hockey and uh, and the Olympics. Uh, I don't I, know if you've watched, watched any of it. Um, uh, I've, 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 I've been watching a little bit in the evenings, like about 10 o'clock at night. Yes. If I'm up in, and what I saw the first couple of days was the snowboarding, women's snowboarding. I saw Three, that. Is that amazing? It is amazing, man. It is. Can you imagine going down those hills and, and, and doing what they do? No. And, you know, I snowboarded, but I never made it by the bunny slope. And folks, <laughs> and when you're snowboarding on the bunny slope, let me tell you, you're going fast. Okay? Yeah, yeah. I have yeah. no idea how they do that. Yeah. Uh, yeah and your just, bum really hurts because you fall so many times. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, 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 it's amazing. And, and, and some of these uh, uh, women, when they when they have fallen, you know, uh, they've got such flexibility yeah. that they're able to pop back. Back up. Isn't you know, that looks amazing? Like, I know, yeah. man. Yeah. I mean, you're, you're thinking they'd be broken bones all over the place, but yeah. they've got such flexibility. So I, I've really enjoyed uh, watching that. How about the, you know, talk about that. How about the, the losers out yes. there? You, right? That's that, another amazing uh, sport. That is a uh, mind blow. You know, you, know, you know what the cool thing is? We have it made for the next two weeks. Yeah, it's like, exactly. Well, it's, just so you know, folks, you can listen to it at six o'clock in the morning, six o'clock at night. It doesn't matter. It's on two stations. The, yeah. the, the, just Go down further, and it's, it's almost on 24 hours a day, which is really dynamite. So Yeah, it, it is. Cool. My, when we were watching the luge, my wife said to me, she said, um, so what do you think those people are thinking about? I said, what I'd be thinking about is staying on that board not and not flipping over. And sure enough, about 30 seconds later, one of the guys lost it and was flying. You know, and that's, I think that's actually more dangerous on the luge track flipping over because there's no way to stop. Oh, for you know, sure. Right? I You're didn't just, see that. That's yeah. sick. Yeah. 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 And luckily the guy was okay, but um, you know, that, that I don't I don't think you'll get me on a luge. No. <laughs> or or do on a, or on a board. When we were kids we would have did it. That would have been great. I would have stayed on it all day. But guess what? <laughs> that you know, we want to live for a while here, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. So let's get to the markets out here. We always uh, typically start just a refresher. Hey, where are we at in the seasonal uh, pattern out here? So we know that the Dow typically tops folks in January, early January, and then it bottoms at the end of January. And this year here, we've got the uh, Dow topping on January 5th. And so far, the bottom is on January 24th. So the seasonal pattern is, oh, it's not even being shown here. Hold on a minute here. Give me a moment. Sorry about that. That's all right. I'm showing the wrong screen. Um, <laughs> do that on occasion. But in any event, so I'll just go back real quickly, folks. Here's there the seasonal are. pattern. Yep. There we go. And then uh, you've got the January 5th top, the January 24th bottom out there. Now, what we really start taking a look at, so what I want to do here, something different than what we've done in the past, is just really take a look at some of the, or the sectors inside the S&P 500 and some of the top-weighted instruments that make up the S&P, the NASDAQ, and the Dow. And what I'm doing here is giving a bigger picture. So these are annual charts, yearly charts that we're taking a look at. And this is the one key thing that everybody that's listening to us, you don't have to be a technician, you just have to have access to a charting application. And what I can assure you is that when you're taking a look at an instrument, if price is trading above the prior year's high, so 2021's high, yes. you're in a bullish or a breakout mode. And if you're not trading above that, you've got something else that's going on. That's especially important for us right now. So here you've got the S&P in the upper left-hand corner. We can see that it's trading below last year's high. So too is the XLK. So too is the healthcare sector. So too is the consumer discretionary sector. Now the XLF, this is interesting. If the XLF can close above 4086, it's going to be in breakout mode. So it's got some possibility and potential. But if we go down one level lower, and you were talking about the energy sector earlier with your prior, in your prior segment here, yes. that is in full-out breakout mode. Now, people didn't necessarily need me to tell them that, but it is good to have the visual to really see what's going on. So the, the two hot sectors right now inside the S&P 
as the energy sector and potentially the financial sector. Otherwise, everything else is trading below 2021's high and says, uh, be careful, be cautious out there. That's good to know, man. I remember saying this last year. I remember the same deal, which is so cool. Go ahead, Steve. That's, this is cool, man. Yeah, I, I, It is, and it, because it's something easy for everybody that's listening to us to follow along. You know, we start talking A to B equals C, D, oscillator and change line, all these things, and it can, it can confuse people. But this one's simple. Now here, Tom, this is a set of charts looking at the futures contracts out here. So in the upper left-hand side, we've got the U.S. dollar index. If it starts trading above 96.94, it's going to be in breakout mode. And I'm going to go all the way over on the right-hand side in the center here. You've got the 10-year Treasury note. Now you already know this, but now that people can see this, it's trading below last year's low. Folks, that's very bearish. As long as that condition remains out there, that is a bearish uh, pattern. If we look at, uh, go down to the uh, lower line out here, we'll see that rice is breaking out. So we've got rice that's going up in uh, price. We've got soybeans that's getting ready to take out this 1586.40 level. That's going to be in full out breakout mode. You've got lights we crude in the upper left out here, 85.38. As long as price remains above that, it's bullish. Now, what's helpful about this for folks is to try to take a look at those things that are bullish, those of you that want long term trades, energy trades, things of that sort. You now know where to focus your time. In the uh, futures market, if you're looking at commodities, rice and soybeans are really important to be watching. And if you're long at a 10-year treasury, Right now, you, you really need to have a good bottom, pop, Tom, because you're trading below last year's low. That is not a good thing. If we shift over here to the top holdings inside the NDX 100, you've got Apple leading the way, Microsoft. But you can see each of these are trading below last year's high. So they all suggest to be very careful out here. Now, Facebook, Facebook's got some real problems because it's trading below 244.61. So this could be – and Facebook, Tom – this is the first year since it's been introduced from uh, since its IPO. This is the first year price has even been able to get below the prior year's low. Wow. So this is telling yep. us there's some really significant issues going on inside of uh, Facebook. If we look at the Dow in the top 10 or the top holdings out here, uh, it shows no breakouts, but it does show that Honeywell, uh, which is the three, four, eight, uh, the 11th uh, weighted instrument inside of the Dow, that is trading below last year's low, 194.55. So anybody that has it as long-term holding, you should really take, you should really watch that 194.55 level. And then finally, the S&P 500, here's the top 12 instruments inside this. What was interesting, I didn't realize this until I put together this chart, the only stock that's breaking out is Berkshire Hathaway. Wow. Which typically follows the S&P 500, but it does not appear to be following the S&P 500 uh, this year. So, the weighted underlying instruments, they all suggest caution, and so too do the yearly charts. And you and I have talked about this. Many of the yearly charts have these TD9 count tops, and that's where we can definitely see price pull back. And so far, uh, that's what we have seen uh, unfold. Shorter term, what I want people to realize is that we should see a bounce. And the reason we should see a bounce is on a weekly basis, the Russell 2000, that's a very right-hand corner panel, yeah. formed a Gartley buy pattern. And this little oscillator and change line change colors. So we should see this move up to the 2140 level. How are we going to know if we're going to see this rally, folks? Well, I'll just take a look at them. Just moving here to the futures contract. There's these descending trend lines. Tom, I think those are the real targets. Whether we get an A to B equal CD to the upside, well, it has to take out those swing points. But right now, the Russell 2000 is the first one to test the trend line. So everybody should keep an eye on the Russell. And so, what an awesome update, Steve. And folks, Thanks. it's really easy to get his newsletter. Come over to our website at TFNN, get that Master in Probability, and it's going to help you tremendously, man. It just helped me tremendously. Have a great one. Have a safe one, Steve. Thanks. You too, Tom.